Welcome. Welcome to the info session. Uh, we are going to hold on for a minute or two just to allow people to continue to join. Welcome, welcome all. Uh, this is the winter information session about the Mass Cultural Council Artist Fellowships in the fiscal year 2022. During this information session, we will talk generally about the Mass Cultural Council's Artist Fellowships, as well as specifically about current applications in the categories of drawing and printmaking, fiction, creative nonfiction, and painting, for which there is a January 24, 2022 deadline. My name is Dan Blask. My pronouns are he, him. I am program officer in the artist department at Mass Cultural Council. I am joined today by my colleague, Kelly Bennett, who you'll have the pleasure of hearing from shortly. Uh, Kelly will be monitoring the chat uh, for any questions that you'd like to submit. Mass Cultural Council is a state agency that promotes excellence, inclusion, education, and diversity in the arts, humanities, and sciences, fosters a rich cultural life for all Massachusetts residents, and contributes to the vitality of our communities and economy. The Council pursues this mission through a wide range of grants, initiatives, and advocacy for artists, communities, organizations, and schools. And this information session will focus on our support of individual artists. We have enabled live auto-generated captions or subtitles for this info session. So if captions or subtitles would be useful to you, I encourage you to turn them on uh, in the toolbar at the bottom of the Zoom screen. And if you have any questions along the way, please write them in the chat and we will answer them either as we go or after the presentation. <clears throat> Today we are talking about the Artist Fellowships. They are Mass Cultural Council's direct unrestricted grants to Massachusetts artists. By direct, I mean that individuals, not organizations, apply to them. And if they're selected, those individuals uh, and not organizations receive those funds. By unrestricted, I mean that the grants, once awarded, can be used um, for anything that the grantees choose. But we hope that the grants will help artists continue to create new work and continue to share their artistic voice in the Commonwealth. I want to point out that in the 2022 fiscal year, Mass Cultural Council has committed over $1 million to the Artist Fellowships. Uh, that's close to double last year's budget for the program. And our goal is to double the number of artists funded through this program. Um, last year, it was around 75, and we hope that it's closer to 150 this year. I should point out it's still a highly competitive program with many, many applications, um, but we are pleased to um, increase the number of artists we'll be able to fund. Also, the fellowship amount is $15,000, um, which is what it has been for the last couple of years. Um, but this year we have increased the finalist award, which had been $1,500 to $5,000. 
The review criteria for the artist fellowships is artistic quality and creative ability based on the work samples submitted. Um, so um, it's an anonymously judged program. The work that you submit um, is what the, the review panel base their uh, review on. Um, they won't know who you are because they won't have your name. It's an anonymously judged award. So it won't be based on um, uh, your resume or past accomplishments, but just on those samples of work um, that you're submitting. Uh, we ask that those works um, be completed within the last four years. They can be in progress, still be in progress, um, or they can have been begun earlier than four years ago, so long as you've continued to work on them within the last four years. We ask for in these categories that the work be original, your original work. Um, and again, as I mentioned, the review is anonymously judged. So we ask that you keep your name uh, off of the work samples themselves. So um, not on the actual uh, images uh, or within the, um, uh, within the, the document file that you submit if you're submitting in fiction, creative nonfiction. Um, the category of traditional arts is not currently one of the categories accepting applications, but I just wanna point out that category does have slightly different review criteria. It's also not anonymously judged. So if you happen to work in the traditional arts category, just know that there are some unique attributes to that category. To be eligible to apply for an artist fellowship, uh, you need to be 18 years or older. You need to be a legal resident of Massachusetts or currently. Um, and when the grants will be announced, in this case, grants will be announced. We expect to announce them by the end of May, 2022. Um, and we, when we, what we mean by legal resident, um, first of all, we ask that you we require that you have been a resident of Massachusetts for the last two years, um, and then our resident now will be in May. Um, the way we define legal resident um, is the Massachusetts tax code's uh, definition of a full year resident, uh, which essentially means you maintain an abode in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts uh, for the whole year, and you spend at least one day more than half of the year actually residing there. Um, you would be ineligible to apply for an artist fellowship for now if you recently received a full artist fellowship, meaning the $15,000 award, recently being the last five years. Um, fellowship recipients need to wait out a period of five years before applying again. You would be ineligible for now you are currently a high school or undergraduate student or a graduate student in a directly related degree program. Normally that means an MFA program. Um, so we ask that MFA students are excited that they are interested in the program, but um, that they apply for it once they've completed their MFA. Um, and if you are a staff or council member or family of a staff, or council member of Mass Cultural Council, um, you would not be eligible to apply. You can apply now in three different categories, drawing and printmaking, fiction, creative nonfiction, and painting. Um, the deadline is January 24th, 2022 at 11.59 p.m. Eastern time um, so the application system will be open until the very end of the day on the 24th. We expect to announce results by the end of May, 2022. Um, we, through this program, we accept uh, applications in actually 12 different categories, um, but categories recur every other year. And then within the those years, we have two deadlines. So uh, earlier this year, we accepted applications in uh, choreography, 
poetry and traditional arts. That, uh, that deadline was in October and we expect to announce the results in those categories at the end of this month. Um, and then next year, we will accept applications in the categories of crafts, dramatic writing, film and video, music composition, photography, and sculpture installation, new genres. Um, and now my colleague Kelly is going to speak a little bit about um, the guidelines for the drawing and printmaking category. Everyone, good morning. So with both uh, drawing and printmaking and the painting category, um, we've had a change in the guidelines. So you can submit a total of five work samples, meaning you can submit five images or uh, five videos uh, or any combination thereof. Um, and if you submit a total of five images, um, the specs are pretty broad. As you can see, um, you would have a maximum of a two gigabyte file. That's a huge file. So it should work just fine for you for whatever size images you have. Um, obviously, we're not gonna accept TIFFs. That would be too large, but you can submit JPEGs or GIFs or PNGs. What we want you to do is title your work files by the title, not by your name. And, and in painting category, the same thing. It would be five images, same specs. And as I said, we just made a change to the guidelines. So if you are an artist who's working um, and need to submit video as part of your application for painting or drawing to show uh, your process or the final piece, that's fine. Um, as long as it's, again, no more than five work samples total. The specs were just published on our guidelines. They'll be in the, the grants application shortly. And if you have any questions about that as well, um, be, feel free to contact uh, myself or Dan. Um, Dan, we have a couple of questions. Do you wanna keep going or shall I just um, let you know? Yeah, why don't we answer some questions and then we'll proceed after that. Okay. What happens when a work is identified by a judge due to a piece being published or shown? That is a great question. Um, so even in that case, we proceed anonymously. So uh, what we would do is if a, if a panelist did recognize a work, um, what we would, first of all, we would ask if that panelist had a, a conflict of interest with that individual. Um, and a conflict of interest would be when that panelist uh, had a family, a contractual or an adversarial relationship with that uh, applicant. Um, we might also ask that panelist whether um, the panelist would prefer for um, say professional reasons not to vote on that particular applicant. And then in either of those cases, we would ask that parents to recuse from voting on and discussing that applicant. So um, if we identified a conflict or the appearance of a conflict after the panelist recognized work, um, we would uh, potentially ask that, if we, if we did identify a conflict, we would ask that panelist to recuse him or herself from voting or discussing that. Um, if there was no conflict, um, the panelist uh, could remain in the vote and still discuss that uh, applicant. But what we would ask that panelist to do is to keep the discussion anonymous, to not bring that applicant's name into the process, also to keep the discussion focused on the work that was submitted and not other work that the panelists happen to know about or other aspects of the applicant's identity that um, that the panelists happen to know. It would still have to proceed, the review would still have to proceed uh, in an anonymous way and be focused solely on the work. Great. Next question would be, 
if I received a painting fellowship within the last six years, can I apply for a fiction fellowship within that time? So I'm afraid not, no. Uh, I mean, if, if, so let's see, it would be this year, um, would it be 2022? So uh, fellows from 2016 or earlier could apply at this point, but any fellowship in any category would still need to wait out that five-year period. Great. What category would collage fall under? Um, artists apply with collage work in a lot of the visual categories. Traditionally, it would fall under a drawing and printmaking category, but you'll also see collage work in painting as well as photography. And all three would be perfectly fine. Right now, um, up for review is, is painting and drawing and printmaking. So you could put your work in either of those categories. Question about audio projects and podcasts, Dan. What about audio projects and podcasts? Right, so um, there's nothing to say that work um, that, that, that eventually becomes a podcast couldn't be part of this process. Um, but the key is really in what form the different um, uh, in what form the different categories accept work? So uh, conceivably, work that has eventually become a, a podcast, you know, if it is presented in essentially essay form, it could come into fiction, creative nonfiction, um, or if it is if it's in audio form. Um, it would be more appropriate for a category that is uh, coming up next year, which is the dramatic writing category. Um, and we have had podcasts uh, come into the dramatic writing category in the past. But again, if, if there's a version of what eventually became the podcast that is more like an essay, um, you could conceivably submit it uh, in the fiction, creative nonfiction category. Next question, a fiction novel in verse fall onto fiction? Yes. Can images be composite images? For example, with the detail shot? Yes, they can. Um, you can subdivide a JPEG image however you see fit. The only requirement is five work samples total. Can images, excuse me, can we submit more than one image of the same work? For example, an artist book shown in full and detail of one page. Yes, you can. Uh, how does collage fit in? Not, not mixed media, but straight paper glued to paper collage. Uh, that would fit in in the drawing and printmaking category traditionally. And if ha someone had um, collaged photographs, they could also come in to the uh, photography category. Is it okay to submit a single piece, all five images, but made up of multiple paintings? Yes, it is. If an artist works in series, is it at all beneficial for the artist to submit all work from one series or should they submit work across series as long as it's cohesively stylistic? Dan, could you take that one? Sure. Um, it always depends. I mean, you, you, don't have to, you don't have to draw from only one series, but I think the second part of that question was really key. Um, I think, showing some cohesion even from different series and projects is really important because you only have a, a really a small amount of work to make your case whether that's five images or uh, 20 pages um, there's not a you need to make a case quickly um, and succinctly and so um, some kind of cohesion between the different works really does help in terms of conveying your artistic voice. Next question. Uh, <clears throat> if an artist, excuse me, the work sample description is optional, how much weight is placed, if any, on this information? I can take that one. Sure. Um, so, it is optional. 
and really it's up to it's up to the applicant to decide in, in the visual categories particularly if you want to augment your visual work samples with text um, and, and it's really the main thing is your work sample that's it so if you want to add a little bit more text to give it some context above and beyond the size of the date of the materials that's there for you but it's it's not it's not the primary thing of your application. It's the work samples that themselves that that the jury is um, looking at and and evaluating. It's it's there for you if you need it. Yeah. What? Go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. I, I would just add. No, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, what What types of proposals are generally just considered? Add that it it can help at the table for the panelists to understand what it is that they're seeing if they need that um, for the context. For instance, it might be clear, it might be clear to you that um, the work is an excerpt from a novel, but that may not be necessarily clear to the panel. So it it's good to set the table for them, help them understand the context of the, the work that you're submitting. What types of proposals are generally considered a good fit for this grant? Um, well, it's not a proposal-based grant. Um, there really is not a project that you are putting forward or proposing. Um, you are submitting samples of your work, um, and those samples are the basis by which the, the review panel is, are, are, is, is reviewing the work and making their decisions. Now, of course, we, we, we hope that any funding that goes to artists help them create future projects. Um, but there is no essay or proposal portion of this grant. It's, it's just based on uh, artistic quality and creative ability uh, based on the work that's submitted. I understand that the file name is required in a fiction piece. I'm assuming that it goes in a footer. Do you need the file name in the footer as well? Are size settings for the footer? No, we don't need the file name in the footer. Um, it's... But with the, the file name is, those, those file names appear to the review panel. So that's why we ask that you use the title of your work rather than say your last name or something along those lines. But it doesn't, it's, no, it, the name doesn't have to be in the footer. Is fiction, nonfiction one category or two? I write both fiction and nonfiction. A great question. It's, it's just one category in the way that we, um, administer this program. Uh, you can submit samples in both. Uh, and by that, I mean, if you submit an application within your 20 page sample, you could have a sample of fiction as well as a sample of nonfiction. Um, but what you would not be able to do is submit two applications in that same category. Um, we do allow multiple applications in different categories. So let's say you worked in fiction, creative nonfiction, but you also are a painter, you could submit applications in both fiction, creative nonfiction and painting, um, but you would not be able to submit two applications in painting. So that goes to this question, can you apply in one, one, more than one category? Yes, you can, as long as you submit different work samples to each fellowship category. <clears throat> How many judges evaluate fiction submissions? That is a great question. Um, it will be it will be many because we we get many many um, applications, probably over five hundred applications. So um, we will likely have um, several dozen different um, reviewers um, when we divide that pool. Um, uh, so so. So many, I would say several dozen. I don't actually know the exact number because it, it will depend on the number of applications that we receive. Um, but um, what we do in many categories uh, and fiction, creative nonfiction is one of them is that there is a two round process where um, there's a first round where, where we divide the pool among um, a number of, uh, of readers uh, and that number is to be set, but we divide the pool among a number of readers and then they vote on 
that those applications and um, from that voting, a smaller number of applications goes to the final panel um, who vote on and, and discuss uh, that smaller group of applications and make their award recommendations from uh, uh, from that group. Are international students studying Master of Design here in Massachusetts a legal visa status required as legal residents? International students studying Master of Design here in Mass in a legal visa status regarded as legal residents? I don't know the answer to that question, Dan. I think the residency sounds fine, but the but that sounds like a directly related degree program that would conflict with our eligibility guidelines, I'm afraid. Um, okay. But it, 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 we, we might need a little more information about that particular situation. The, the residency, so long as uh, the applicant has who lives in Mass currently and has been in Mass for the last two years, um, that, I, that sounds, um, if I'm understanding the question that the, the applicant lives in Mass currently, um, I, I, the residency question seems fine, but the um, directly related degree program question, would I, I'm not so sure. That sounds like the applicant may have to wait until uh, the studies are concluded to apply. Okay. Paintings that have the artist signature visible need to be retouched. No, we don't want you to uh, hurt the integrity of your work. We understand that signatures are part of paintings and uh, prints. Uh, so please don't blur them out. Of, it's just part of, of the work and that's, that's fine. If I have a process video that has myself in it, is that okay? Or would that be violating the anonymous rule? That's perfectly fine. You are part of the work, um, that's fine. What we don't wanna have in an application is, is your name appear front and center in a description or, in, or an image file, title, that kind of thing. Does, does it typically hurt a visual artist to submit paintings that are not cohesive conceptually, but are conceptually stylistic. I would answer that by saying you, you, you should send in your best work, five total. And there's, there's no hurting a visual artist if it's not conceptually, but conceptually stylistic. You really just wanna send in your best work, whether it's five discrete pieces or from a series, um, that's, it's really your call. Um, it's, it's really your call. Does the ap application ask for a person, personal statement by the artist slash writer? Dan? No, um, it does not. I mean, there, there is an opportunity to include some context in that work sample description, but there's no artist statement slash personal statement uh, portion of this grant the way there, there is to some other application forms. I'm writing a nonfiction book on jewelry of Star Trek. Am I eligible? Yeah, that sounds like it, it fits right into creative nonfiction. That, that as long as the other eligibility guidelines, as long as you meet those, um, the, the work sounds like it's a, it's a fit for fiction, creative nonfiction. If you're applying to fiction, creative nonfiction, do you have to apply in just one of those genres? What if you write both? Is it okay to submit samples of both fiction and nonfiction with your single application? Yes, it's okay to submit samples of both, just keeping within a 20 page maximum. Actually, Kelly, do you mind, do you mind if I- No, please. And just do, and maybe we'll, we'll pause again we'll in a minute. We'll pick it up. Yeah, sure. Um, so that that uh, segues directly into the next slide, which is the the guidelines specific to fiction, creative nonfiction. Um, so we ask that you submit in this category samples of your fiction or creative nonfiction work. Um, that can be fiction, essays, memoir, graphic novels, flash fiction, flash essays, um, hybrid work that I have not yet described, but someone earlier asked about um, 
you know, a novel in pro or in uh, in verse. Great. Um, so those samples can be full stories and essays, or they can be excerpts of longer works. You can submit samples of both fiction and creative nonfiction, but there's a 20 page maximum. Um, and it can you can submit either one document file that has your full 20 pages or up to four different files that together add up to 20 pages or less. Okay. And as we said before, with the painting painting category, we've changed the guidelines so that you can submit a total of five work samples, which could be five images, five or five videos or any combination thereof. If you're submitting still images, your specs would be two gigabytes maximum with these file types. And again, you'd want to name your image file by the title of this work. So it's pretty straightforward, five images. And as we said before, you can, you can, go, you can submit work from a series. You can have detail shots. You can, you can subdivide a JPEG to show two, two images in one. It's your call. And you can now also augment your application with video. So if you, if you have a process painting and you're working more conceptually, um, it's a total of five minutes total running time for videos if you choose to use video in the application as well. Just a, a quick um, question was, I'm confused, are we discussing drawing or nonfiction? We're discussing all, all three. We're discussing the availability of the fellowships for Massachusetts residents right now. And that there's three categories up for review. There's drawing, there's drawing and printmaking, there's painting, and then there's fiction, creative, nonfiction. We're discussing all of them in today's session. Um, I wanted to mention, uh, there was a question that had come in before the, the info session started, uh, which was, Along with the review criteria of artistic quality and creative ability, does Mass Cultural Council have any other funding priorities? So specific themes of work or types of work that we would be sooner to fund uh, than others. And, um, and the answer is no, you know, we, 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 we have the criteria of artistic quality and creative ability um, and based on the work submitted and that's, that's it. There, there aren't funding priorities beyond that. Um, we, of course, we want to fund Massachusetts artists, uh, and we, Kelly and I, invite um, review panelists with a wide, wide range uh, of backgrounds and perspectives. Um, and we ask those review panelists to define what artistic quality and creative ability means to them. Um, trusting in that wide range of expertise and uh, perspective and background. And question for fiction applicants. Uh, can you further explain this question, provide a brief description or synopsis of the selected work samples broader context? Absolutely. So when we ask for that, what, what we really need is I mean, when, when review panelists are looking at your work, you'd have to assume they're not seeing it in its intended form. So whether that intended form is, you know, a, a, in a gallery or in a book, um, they're seeing it in a different way, right? They're seeing it on a computer screen, most likely. So um, set the stage for them a little bit. I mean, you, you, uh, is the work an excerpt of a longer, of a longer piece? Um, is it a complete piece in and of itself? Uh, is it fiction? Is it nonfiction? The, the type of things that might be evident to that review panelist um, if she were approaching it um, in its usual setting, but maybe aren't quite so obvious when approaching it in a grant application. So. Um, basically just setting the stage for them to understand 
you know, how to how to read or how to view your work. In the fiction work sample, should we put the title and what type of work it is? Example, title, novel, excerpt. And would it help to include a synopsis of the novel in the work sample? I, so I didn't fully understand. I think that included its actual, its actual title would be what we'd want there. So, you know, if it's, if it's, if the novel is um, called Bowling Ball, you'd, you'd title your uh, file Bowling Ball excerpt, let's say. Um, yes, it can be helpful to include the, the excerpt, or I'm sorry, the synopsis. It's not, if, if they don't need a full synopsis to really understand the work, um, you know, it's not necessary, but it can be helpful to understand how to approach the excerpt that you're submitting. Next question. Is median annual income gross or net? I think you might be referring to, hmm, I think there is a question in, when you're making your profile in the new system. Okay. About, about, um, Meeting that and and I don't I don't I think you can approach it any way you want. It's really uh, uh, let's say gross. Let's just say gross. Um, but that that's that's not that information would not it does not factor into this program in any way, shape, or form. We do ask for some demographic information in the um, in in our new system. In fact, why don't I? Move to the next slide. We have a, a new grants management system this year, and it does ask for contact information and some demographic, some optional demographic information, um, such as the uh, median income. Uh, are you above or below the median income? Uh, um, I think that's one of the questions in the in the, the profile now. But um, you know, we th that information is not factored into the artist fellowships review um, is really it's something that we're asking for in with the new grants management system um, to best understand uh, who and how we're serving uh, you know the Massachusetts creative community. So Dan um, if someone has trouble um, in logging into the system or gets into a little jam um, can can um, we let them know that they can e email either one of us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, do get in touch with us. And, and maybe I'll, I'll go over next our new system and how to create a registration. Um, but absolutely, if you run into any difficulties, um, get in touch with us. You can find our email addresses under the staff listing at massculturalcouncil.org, Kelly Bennett or Dan Blask. Um, in general, Kelly covers the visual arts applications like drawing and printmaking and uh, painting. And um, I cover the uh, literary, like uh, fiction, creative nonfiction. But honestly, you can contact either one of us and we will do everything we can to help you. Um, and, but, and we understand that, that um, we're moving to a new system and they're there are always growing pains. So um, we may have details that we can improve, um, besides which it's always, there's no grants management system that's perfect. Um, there are plenty of oddities to go around. And so if there are any difficulties in, in logging into the system, yes, please do get in touch with us. Um, so you can find a link to the new grants management system on our guidelines page. Um, maybe I will show that. Kelly, maybe sure. show our guidelines page. Okay. Um, can you see the guidelines page now? Yes. Okay. So this, if you go to massculturalcouncil.org and start clicking on artists and art, 
um, and then artist fellowships that will bring you to a page that has the process for applying for an artist fellowship. And I'm just gonna scroll all the way down. Of course, I would highly encourage you to spend time with the guidelines and, and read them uh, before you apply, but I'm scrolling down just for the purpose of showing you how to reach the on, a new online form. So let's say I'm applying and drawing and printmaking. Um, the deadline is January 24th. Apply to drawing and printmaking using Mass Cultural Council's online grant system. So that brings me to this login page for our grants management system. If, if you have applied for our grants in the past, um, so whether that's applying for an artist fellowship or applying for the COVID-19 relief fund for individuals. Um, if you've applied for an individual grant from us in the past, we um, more than likely, we've already imported your email address into our system. So if you applied to us in the past, the first thing you should try to, to do is click forgot password. That will ask you to type in your email address and it will send you an, an email um, that will allow you to um, create a new password in our new system. If you never get that email and or you just know that you have never applied to Mass Cultural Council in the past, then you would just wanna go and click register um, and you can register in the new system. May I pause you there, Dan? Yes. The two points I wanna make up uh, uh, to point out do you know if one needs to register under a legal name um, because they use a different name in everyday life? That's a great question. I, I do think that because it, it may be best to use a, the, uh, one's legal name in this system. However, someone who is selected to be a grantee, there'll be time before um, there'll be time to communicate with um, Kelly or myself about how that grantee would like to appear. Um, we, we, we include, we like to include um, all of our grantees in a, 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 a website called the online gallery, a Mass Cultural Council gallery, where we um, include some work samples and um, some biographical information about each of our grantees. And so um, if the applicant wants to appear a certain way and that the, their name to appear a certain way, um, there's time to communicate that um, before it goes live and before it becomes public. But for the purpose of the grant application system, because potentially it eventually leads to, if, if that applicant is selected as a grantee, um, that eventually leads to a kind of contractual uh, aspect. Um, I think that the legal name is probably the best to use. The other question I wanted to raise was, are there any access points or resources for those with cognitive disabilities who may need technical support or guidance during the application process? And the answer would be yes you can contact Dan or myself and we will uh, help you with the application in whatever um, needs are, are there for the individual applicant. You can reach out to us by phone or by email and we will work with the applicant in providing technical support or guidance uh, during the application process. question to be a reviewer do you need to have won a fellowship in a previous year and would being a reviewer hurt chances to apply in future so you do not need to have been a grantee to be a reviewer when you when you um register or complete your registration on our new grants management system, um, we would appreciate if you filled out 
not only the applicant information, but also the demographic information. And then there's another tab for panelist registration. If you are interested in serving as a review panelist, please fill out that tab as well. Um, you, uh, you don't have to be a grantee. And was part of the question, does it, does it hurt your chances? Yes. Apply? Okay. No, I mean, it would not hurt your chances. I think it could only help to, if you were able to serve as a um, review panelist, it's, it's interesting to be on that side of things and see how the, um, the panelist process works. I think it could only help your future applications in any number of um, grant opportunities. That's only one of them. Can you start the application, save it, and then go back to it? Yes, absolutely. And so it, one thing that with our new system, um, when you first get to the home screen, you'll see a you'll see the words current opportunities. You click on that, and that's where you'll find these three grants. But once you start an application, um, then you'll find that application in the in progress section. Um, so that's just something to be just to, to keep in mind. Uh, so yes, you can definitely save, um, log out come back later. Will this info session recording be available? Yes, we plan to publish it on our uh, YouTube channel. And we will likely also uh, include it on our online resource, Artsake. As a visual artist, can you submit five videos showing your work and work samples, or will the panel prefer still images of the work? An applicant needs to submit the best work sample type, meaning a still image or a video file that best represents their work. So it's really, it's really up to the applicant to decide how they want to document their work. So for instance, if I'm a, a still life painter, I'm going to submit five JPEG images because I'm going to want to show as much visual information for that singular object, that two-dimensional painting through a JPEG. If I'm making a performative piece with painting, then I may want to show a movement or if I am make, uh, applying in drawing and printmaking and I have an artist book, um, I may want to turn the pages or turn the book itself if it's more three-dimensional to show um, to show more visual information because of what the work is. So it's really up to it's really up to you, the applicant, um, to decide what's best to show your work. Does it in any way hurt an artist to submit some of the same work they submitted the previous year? No, it does not. Uh, the panelists, the review panelists change every every cycle. Um, plenty of times you know, we have seen work um, that uh, does not lead to a grant one year, then um, the next time with a different group of people, it, it leads to a successful grant. So no, it does not, it does not harm an application. I just want to quickly mention something that I noticed a couple of um, raised hands. Um, we have some uh, technical limit limitations, so any questions you have, uh, we'll have to go into the chat. I'm sorry about that, but um, please put your questions in the chat and we can continue to read them out loud. In fiction samples, should we also add the categories such as contemporary romance or young adult novel? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Those are um, all genres of uh, fiction are completely sci-fi, fantasy, all are, are uh, eligible to apply, to submit in the fiction, creative, nonfiction category. Are there any examples of work descriptions for fiction slash creative nonfiction available? Is there a word limit on that description? Um, could, Kelly, would you mind reading that one more time? Sure. Uh, are there any examples of work descriptions for fiction slash creative nonfiction available? Is there a word limit on that description? 
there is a character limit. I think it's 1500 characters. It's meant to be brief. If I'm wrong and it's 1000, I apologize, but it's meant to be brief. Um, we now we don't really have a a I cannot think of a a, a, a sample. Don't get too hung up on it. I mean, it's it's mainly the work sample that you're submitting is going to be. I mean, that's what this program's all about. If you can use that description to make it a little easier for the review panelists to uh, understand your work, great. Plenty of times we see people not submit work sample descriptions, and if you don't need it, again, it's optional. So um, I would say focus on selecting the work sample or uh, work samples that you're going to submit. Um, the, the, the work sample description box again. You know, just don't get too hung up on it. If you can uh, be helpful in that section, great. Um, but it's really the the samples that are the main driver of this grant and this process. The application asks for a tracking image to be uploaded. What is a tracking image? In the case of uh, the visual category, since it's an anonymous review and the jurors aren't going to track your application by your name, the tracking image is a thumbnail image next to your application number that gives them a visual recall of which application is which. It just It's an aid in the administration of the program in lieu of having your name appear in the application for the juror. Is there consideration of the range of grantees, example, emerging artists versus established, race, gender, and more backgrounds? Right. So th those aspects do not come into the review criteria. We don't, um, uh, we don't instruct our panels, for example, to give us a kind of um, a result, we don't prescribe what the result should be. We tell them what the review criteria is, and we try to bring in panelists that have a, uh, an extremely wide range of um, uh, experience in that work, as well as um, um, backgrounds and um, uh, uh, expertise and and a, a very racially diverse uh, panel as well. Um, so the review criteria does remain focused on the work. We often find when you look at the grantees list um, that it includes emerging artists, mid-career artists, you know, established um, all in the same grouping of grantees. Um, but we don't give the panelists the, the edict, you know, that they need to, um, produce like a, you know, two emerging, three mid-career uh, and um, an experienced artist. You know, it, 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 it's really just about the artistic quality and creative ability of that work submitted. And most often um, we, we reach a wide range in terms of experience um, when we see that final list of awardees. Dan, I'm being mindful of the time. So I'm gonna give you some rapid fire questions. Great. Okay, so what is the criteria, re review criteria to judge your creative nonfiction work? What must your sample contain in order to have a better chance to make it to the second round of judging? Send your best work, just like uh, Kelly mentioned. The work that you feel is your strongest work, that's what you send. And if you are not quite sure what that is, you know, I would say, do you have any, do you have a group, a writing group, or do you have peers that you trust? Um, what would they say is your strongest work? Um, uh, send that. When submitting images and paintings, is there a preferred resolution 300? Um, no, I mean, you can 300 is fine with this new system. They don't require a pixel dimension resolution. Again, it's the, what they care about is file size. So not exceeding uh, the two gigabyte. How many reviewers will look at each application? Um, that's wholly dependent upon um, the fellowship category. Um, I would say in drawing and printmaking and painting, it's probably 
four to five reviewers and down in fiction? Well, it may <clears throat> it may be two in that first round, and then, um, I, I, as you said, in the final round, it may be another um, maybe between three and five. Right. How many uh, fellowships and finalists will be selected in each category? I don't have that number off the top of my head. I, I, I don't either, but if you, yeah. would, let me put it this way. It will be um, 150 awards for the program. We're, we're about to um, finalize and announce um, maybe 40% of those. So, um, so it'll be um, probably close to 20 and 30 awards in each of these three categories. And, and that would be divided between the $15,000, $5,000 award. So yeah, we, we, we truly are pleased um, that our executive director made it a, uh, a goal to double the amount of artists awarded and we'll be able to reach um, that many more artists this year. For drawing and printmaking, should we include the size, medium, and year in the description? After you upload um, your image, you will see a box beneath the image that says edit metadata. You'll click on that box and a pop-up window will open in which you can type in the title, um, the medium, uh, the year, and a brief description of that individual image if you so choose. But yes, you definitely want to include the size, the medium, and the year um, for your images. Um, how many reviewers will look at each application? I think we covered that. Yeah. Uh, where is the balance in painting with mixed media that uses various paints with drawing, textile, printmaking tools, et cetera? I, I'm not sure I understand the question. I would say that uh, the painting category and the drawing category, you'll see a wide range of process uh, for making paintings and drawings and you'll have people that will paint on textiles or use textile as the pigment to create the painting. You'll have traditional paint, um, paintings done with uh, oil and you'll have um, non-traditional mediums and process used to accomplish uh, making a work as well. It's a very broad range of work. I'd, I'd say if you have any questions after this webinar is done to please get in contact with Dan and myself and we'll be happy to answer any further questions that you might think of after this. Um, let's see, can you clarify what you said earlier about a tracking image? That is, do I upload the tracking image or is that something a reviewer does? In the application form, you will see there will be an image upload button specific for the tracking image for you to upload. And it can be one of the five images that is of your work sample. So essentially what you'll be doing is uploading your five images that you want reviewed, as well as one tracking image for the reviewer to have. Is there a preferred browser? I registered via Firefox on Mac and now my homepage is blank. Never mind. Someone said, okay. There's not really a preferred browser. I think most of the major ones should work fine. Firefox, Chrome, um, yeah. they should work fine. Right, one thing I do wanna note if we haven't said it already is that when you go to upload your, your files into the application form, you want to do it from your computer. You don't want to upload image files or video files from a cloud-based platform, that won't work. You want to have them be on, on your computer itself. If you've applied in poetry category in the last grant year and not yet gotten results, is it okay to apply in fiction, nonfiction? Yes. And, and then, um, so please do apply. If there is the happy result that um, you are selected as a poetry um, grantee um, for the $15,000, then you know we might have to take the action of retracting the, the fiction, creative nonfiction 
um, application, but I might that might that might fall into the good problem to have bucket. Dan, we're a little bit after noon, but we've got a few more questions. Okay, if I keep going. Absolutely. Okay. Do you label title.jpg or just the title only? So in the work sample description, it would be the title only. Yeah. The work I create, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just say if folks have to leave, it is, it's understandable. And again, we will post the video on the Mass Cultural Council's YouTube channel. Um, so you can catch the, the if you have to depart, um, you can catch the end of the uh, info session there. The work I create starts with painting and drawing with ink on paper. Then I digitize and complete the work digitally. Should I submit my application to the drawing category? You can submit to, you can definitely submit to the drawing category if you consider the work drawing. Um, if you consider it painting, you can, you can submit it to the painting category. I mean, it's really, it's really your call on whether you think of your work as painting or drawing. And it, and, and it really doesn't matter whether the painting or the drawing is manipulated and, and or created digitally or a combination thereof, it's fine. And also keep in mind, you can apply in more than one category with different work. Which is prefer, preferred format for fiction, Word or PDF? Either is fine. It's it's really up to uh, it's really up to you. Either is absolutely fine, and and the system accepts both. Does the fiction nonfiction grant application accept poetry as well? No, because we do have a separate poetry category. Unfortunately, that deadline was in October, um, but we will accept uh, poetry again um, in the twenty twenty four grant cycle. Can you submit multiple proposals with different series of works that have different focuses? In different, well, first of all, the, you're not submitting a proposal. You're really just submitting samples of work. Um, you can only apply once per category, but you could apply in multiple categories. So if you happen to work in, it sounds like you're probably a visual artist. If you, if you um, happen to have work that could fit in painting, but also work that could fit in the drawing and printmaking category, you could submit an application in each, but you would only be able to submit once in, in each category. Dan, I think that we've gone through the chat questions. If, if I've missed any, I apologize to the artists here, but please feel free to reach out, reach out to us. We're, we're always here for you. That's, I, and I, again, I, I appreciate folks attending. I want to go over one last thing um, when it comes to the grants management system. Um, your uh, your email address is related to your profile. If any any applicants happen to be local cultural council volunteers, um, or if you uh, work for a cultural organization that may have, or run a cultural organization that may have applied to our grants in the past, it's possible your email address would be connected to one of those, either the LCC or the organizational account. Um, and then you'll log in and you won't, you'll find you won't be able to apply for the artist fellowship because it thinks that you are um, either an LCC volunteer uh, or related to an organization. Um, so if that's the case, um, we ask you, you create a new registration, a new profile with a different email address. Um, and it, you can allow that individual account um, to be the one that you use to apply for the artist fellowships um, and other individual grants in the future. Um, we kind of went over this already. Did I already, if I'm in, if I already applied in the past, am I in your system already? Yes, most likely, and just get in touch with us if you run into any questions uh, along the way. Um, but if you have applied before, um, uh, you're probably already, your email is probably already in the system. Um, just click that forget pass, forgot password button um, and you can start the process from there when you receive the automatic email. If you have not applied to us in the past or if you do not receive that automatic email, 
just click the register button on that login page. Um, this is what I already went over about the um, being a person at a cultural organization or a local cultural council member and how you need a different individual account for the artist fellowships. Um, and did any other questions roll in? Yeah, there was um, another question. Hang on just a sec. Is one allowed to have a reader one knows personally prior to application? I mean, yes, absolutely. If, if, if you mean, are you allowed to run your work by someone before you upload it and submit it? Sure, I mean, absolutely, of course. Um, uh, the, it, certainly, if, if you're talking about the review process, um, you know, we try to, we run it anonymously. And so, of course, we try to keep personal information and any kind of personal connections um, out of the, the actual process. But I think you're referring to preparing the work for I submission. Think, I think so. Um, can, you, can your first name appear in one chapter of a memoir excerpt? Yes, and and this this goes kind of to what Kelly had mentioned about having a a signature in a painting. Um, we wouldn't ask you to change the content of the work. So if your first name is in the memoir, in the actual work itself, you know, absolutely, it, had, it, it, it we understand it can't be removed. Um, you can remove the byline, you know, the the title of the work by, and then the author's name. That you can remove, but we understand sometimes names might appear in memoirs just as in other categories such as choreography. Sometimes if a choreographic artist is also the dancer, we understand that that artist might appear in say the video, but um, but no, we wouldn't ask you to remove your name from the memoir itself. I think, I think that's it, Dan. Again, we just wanna convey our deep appreciation to you for the creative work that you do and for your interest in the artist fellowships. Um, you can find uh, us, Kelly Bennett and Dan Blask under the staff listing at massculturalcouncil.org uh, if you have any other questions and um, good luck to um, all of you out there with the health issues and the, uh, the weather and the cold, but uh, please do contact us if we can be of support to you either in the artist fellowship application process um, or in your ongoing work. Thank you. Thank you.